Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It's 7.30 on Wednesday night, and we're live at last. Sorry for being a little bit late. As you can see, there's just me and Steve today. We've, we've uh, had technical problems. Well, we haven't. We, we've right, actually no. been okay today. We've had no technical problems, as usual. Well, we actually, no. No, to be fair, the entire first session of Skype that we, we started up was a complete clusterfuck because everyone's everyone's camera was blurry, everyone was cutting out, something's going on on the internet today, I think uh, I think ISIS I'm are blaming. having a go or something. Yeah. I'm blaming Sam. <laughs> yeah, but and uh, unfortunately I'm not Sam... associating Sam with ISIS. No. I'm blaming him for the Skype session. I said Sam, Sam was... Um, uh, he's, he hasn't got a very good internet connection anyway, he was here, but we just couldn't hear him, so we've kicked him out. And Lou has decided to just not turn up today so yeah. screw him um so yes um as you can see just me and Steve, and uh, we were just gonna kick off with um a quick quick going through what we've what we've played this week I suppose <coughs> i'll let you start uh, Steve, because i've got quite a i've got a fair <coughs> list this week you have got a fair chunk actually um i did promise uh, last week that i would play a game um i didn't get a massive amount of time but i did download uh an early access game called stranded deep okay have you heard of it Nope. Uh, what it is basically, it's a survival simulator. Um, on, it's basically a Tom, uh, a, a Tom Hanks in Castaway simulator. <laughs> right. Okay. So, do you have What is crashes? What's what? the what's the coconut's name? Oh, Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Uh, there's plenty of coconuts. There's no volleyballs. Um, but yeah, there you're on a plane when it starts the intro, then the plane downs and you're basically on a life raft and you've got to paddle your way to the nearest island and then survive. Right, and uh, I, I've, I mean, there's a lot of survival games out there at the moment though, isn't there? I mean, I've... But this one's, it's kind of like a survival slash crafting game, but yeah. it's, um, I know it seems to be a little bit more, it's realistic in the sense of what you can do, I, you can make like a crude axe out of a bit of rock and a bit of vine and a piece of wood hmm. uh, but it's not so realistic in the fact that it's incredibly easy um, I, you can go for what's your, what's your main objective then? to survive as far as I can tell uh, it doesn't really, like I say, it is an early access it doesn't really seem to have any specific goals but you can craft you can make yourself a hut, you can make basic weapons and tools uh, and there's a lot of shipwrecks that are dotted around Right. That you can kind of scavenge in and get bits of bobs out of, and I've read online that you can actually make a like an outboard motor to put on your raft, so you can skip between the islands quite quickly. It's uh, it's not procedurally generated. Uh, I, I started two games to kind of see whether it was, and it's exactly the same things in the same place. But if you want to go to a different island, it does take about ten minutes worth of paddling. Right. And the right. only imminent danger in the game are sharks at the minute. Obviously, they have to have sharks if you're on an they have island. To have sharks if you're on an <laughs> island, yeah. Uh, there's nothing on the islands themselves that can hurt you. Not that I've found so far, but I've only been about four or five islands. Yeah. Uh, it's it's quite nice to look at, and it's it, it's a good concept because it's kind of like a survival crafting game in the sense that you would imagine having to survive, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like... Nothing to do, desert, but apart yeah, from, just apart kind from of survive. Like, uh, the days last about 24 minutes between sunrise and the subsequent sunrise. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's it, it's quite easy to survive. Um, there's plenty of fluids around you can drink. There's plenty of coconuts grown. You just drink them. Uh, you can eat the coconuts. There's potato plants that grow. And when you kind of take the fruit from the plant, it seems to respawn about three or four minutes later. And there's, a, there's, a, there's obviously a deep fat fryer, so you can make chips. With yeah, potato I've, plants, I, I haven't crafted that yet. No, no, and uh, you know, I'll prob probably, uh, probably a cook somewhere to make your gourmet food. I imagine. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's it, it's a good concept. I haven't been able to kill a shark yet. Well, no, no, is it a good concept though? Because th there's a lot of there's a lot of those type of games out there at the moment. I mean, I know a lot of them are two D, but there's also a lot that are coming out that are three D. Yeah, they all seem to involve zombies. Uh, yeah, a lot of them do. A lot of them. Do. In fact, I was watching someone playing a zombie survival game um, the other day. Can't remember what it was though. That's what my head. Um, it was on. It was on Twitch. I can't remember. Yeah. And of the other uh, survival games, the ones that I've seen anyway, they're all MMOs. Um, uh, so like this is a single player only game. Right. Right. Is so it? Um, is it Unity? For chance. Um. Good question. Uh. Quite possibly. Yeah. I'm not that ex experienced enough with Unity to make 
Well, they usually, they usually put stick a Unity logo on the front There wasn't of the game. a Unity logo on the splash screen either when you booted up or anything, so yeah. possibly not. I don't know if I'll put a Unity logo on mine or not. I Is it if you need to. I think, you, of course, if you want. No, I'd, I'd have thought if you're using their, like their engine, they might force you to use... Uh, well, I'm, pay- I'm paying for it. I've paid a license. Surely I don't have to conform to anything. That I, Everything that I do within the engine is mine. I own it. Yeah, if there was surely every kind of major game developer that, that, that buys a license for a certain bit of software, they still put it on their credits, don't they? Yeah, because it's interesting to people, I suppose. I, I don't think there's any requirements for it, though. As long as you paid your fees and... Yeah, I mean, it usually, I mean, it used to be the case that you'd you'd pay a full like a big whack. You know, you pay hundreds of thousands of pounds or twenty, thirty thousand pound or whatever. You'd get access to CryEngine, and you'd get this. You know, you get the SDK, and you could develop a game. Yeah. But these days, it's so subscription based, and you know, once the subscription finishes, you don't own the engine anymore. You don't. Sorry, you don't. You can't use the engine anymore. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's it's changing. Enough, yeah. But I'm sure I don't know if there's anything that says you have to put our logo in there. I think it'd be a bit restrictive, especially for some indie studios. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I've been talking out my ass. Um, so is that the only thing you played then? Um, yes. You haven't even played any other old games that you've went back to. No, I had a bit of a, a blast on Mario Kart. But like I say, I, I I am in the process of moving house, and I've got quite a lot of work on. So it's I'm leaving my PC here. Because I'm transferring my broadband last. Yeah. So the more time I'm spending in my other house, kind of the less time I'm spending on my PC. So it's a bit kind of up in the air at the minute. Yeah. Once yeah. I get everything moved in, then I'll be back onto it. Um, hello to the people who just joined the channel. Uh, just in case you wonder why there's only two people here, we usually have quite a few people um, uh, on the show, at least three, um, usually four. But the other two hosts, um, and we uh, couldn't couldn't come today or we had technical problems and um uh the the we it was too short notice to get a guest basically so uh, we are what yeah. we are we're just talking about what we've been playing this week at the moment um so yeah i've been playing obviously been playing quite a lot of uh saints row 4 yeah you're loving that at the minute yeah I mean, actually i haven't played that much of it this week but i did want to talk about one bit i've just done and I th- it's part of the main quest yeah. um yeah at some point you have to rescue all of your teammates I yeah. think that's quite early on, but I've been doing all of the side missions, so I'm still early on in the uh, in the main mission. But yeah, and there's a um, when you uh, rescue Alicia, I think it is, or Aisha, or something like that. All right, um, which one's she? She's 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 the hard hard nails one. She's not the. I think there's the, there's the one who's been in it forever. Uh, with does, does got it boobs the out. One? The one who. Um... No, gets- no, no. She that's Kylie or Kaylee or something like that. Um, no, it's one. It's one that's she was in your team right at the beginning of the game. She was the leader of the team, or she was the one who was pushing you along. Right. Anyway, but she, I've I've just done her mission, and it's basically a Metal Gear Solid mission. It's it's a Metal Gear Solid parody. You get hold right. of a box, and whenever you go up to a guard, um, it comes up with WTF above the head, and the little Metal Gear Solid <laughs> sound goes blue. It's cool, um, but unfortunately, that mission. no. I've, I got to the end of that mission. Um, I killed the boss guy. In fact, I've done the mission three times through now, and it, luckily it's only short. But it's a bit annoying because it's like, right, this is all tutorial stuff, you know, because it's a new mechanic into the game. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I've uh, I've got this. Um, uh, I, I completed it the first time, killed the boss, and then something happened, and my game crashed, which is the first time it's crashed since I changed all my settings. Really, really annoying. And then I went and did it again. I got to the door just before the boss, turned round, she was talking to me, the girl, but she disappeared and I couldn't find her anywhere in the level. And then I did it again the third time and um, I got into the boss area and the boss didn't appear. So I just, I was like... Yeah, some are fucked up going on there. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of bugs in Saints Row 4 though, so, you know, it, it is what it is, I think. Um, other game I played, there's Chaos Engine. I, pl- I got the... the yeah, is that the original one? Well, it, it plays like the original from my memory. It's, it looks like the original. It's just a remastered version. You know, it looks a bit prettier. And I, f- yeah. I totally forgot. It's been so many years since I played it. I totally forgot that there was like an upgrade system in it, and you could upgrade your characters. Um, you've got like you've oh, got experience shit, yeah. bars for each. Yeah, you've yeah. got like weapons and stamina and charisma and things like that. And um, I think there's one of them, wisdom, that only affects the AI if you play as an AI character. Um, if sorry, if you play with an AI character, because obviously, for those who haven't played Chaos Engine, I know it's we're probably preaching to people who've, who've at least heard of it or seen it, but um, it's a top-down kind of 
uh, shooter, you know, like um, Smash TV or, or Gauntlet, you know, that kind of thing. But it's a top-down yeah. shooter, and it was very big on the... <coughs> was, it, was it Amiga it came out on originally? Uh, I, I had it for the Amiga. I, I played it on the Amiga. I, I didn't I have it. I think it came out then. for the Atari ST as well. And yeah. Well, they were they were very similar. I think, weren't they both the same instruction set when they're both 8600s or something like that? So assembly. Oh, okay. well, I'm sure that the uh, there was some difference between them because they couldn't just do a direct part. No, but some games you could put in both. Some games you could actually put in both um, in Atari and uh, Amiga, but not all of them. So I don't know what I can't. I mean, I was never into the geeky side and the technical side back then, so I don't I don't know exactly. Well, I quite was, but I didn't have an Atari, so I didn't really have anything to experiment with. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I played that a little bit. It is insanely hard like it's ridiculously hard <laughs> you find that with a lot of older games going back to them i think that like progressively we've been getting easier and easier obviously to satisfy a wider and wider audience and i know it's it, it's almost like a bit of a dumbing down because yeah. you do go back to the old school games you're like jesus christ how did i ever do this yeah it's um it i, I think i got into like the second act um a couple of times but just the enemies just started coming and you know it's one of them games where you can only shoot up down left right and then diagonally but mm. i played it with um i played it with a pad with a 360 pad and although it was okay it just didn't feel like i was going in there you know when i was holding diagonal yeah, it yeah. didn't it, it it wasn't it didn't feel accurate enough and i don't know if that's a programming thing or it used to be like that and that's just original code that's been you know kind of rehashed I, I don't know if it's that or the control pad but then again i've been playing other games with the control pad and it's been all right so i'm sure the control pad will be fine it might just be the way that it's it, it's interpreting the signals does it does have a bit of a squeak though this not doing it now obviously i've got uh, one, one one of the one of the sticks squeaks and you know as i'm playing it it's like <laughs> kind of annoying um, you need to put a bit of WD-40 on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Right, um, yes, yeah, so I also played a game called VVVVV. Is that like five fives? It, well, no, it's five Vs. Uh, it's right. it's an old school, or it's an old school style indie platformer game. And it was originally, I, I, when I was on, uh, I was on another podcast this week, which is coming out on YouTube tomorrow, and I'll, uh, I'll pimp it a bit later on. But um, the uh, VVVVV, VVVV. V, v, five V's, whatever it is. Anyway, it's because all of the people in the game begin with V, and all it is is a little platformer. But you run around, and when you press the jump button, essentially it inverts gravity, yeah. and you go up to the ceiling. You're probably watching a video oh, now, I imagine. Um, and I'm I, looking at the screenshots. I got it ages ago in a humble bundle, like the first humble bundle I ever bought. I think I got it in, and I've been like, I looked at the video, and I thought that looks cool, but I've never really been in the mood for a platformer. It's an yeah. insanely difficult platformer, though. It's like a it's it's styled like it's been built for a Commodore sixty four. It's actually quite a big game. There's a lot of stuff in it, um, and you know you go off and you collect things, but most of the stuff is p puzzle platforming and try. Like one one of the bits, yeah. right? I came into this this room, came down one side of the room, landed on a platform, and I jumped over the platform. It was three like moving platforms going up and down. Jumped over them, went over to the other side, did like an insanely difficult room on the other side but then came back and thought right there's another ex exit to this room which was kind of bottom left and I, it didn't occur to me for ages I was trying to kind of jump on top of the platforms and like fall off but there's yeah. spikes right where uh, right where the uh, the the exit is and you just, I just kept falling no matter what egg what what angle I tried it at I was falling on the spikes and then I realized I, I needed to flip upside down and go up and underside the yeah. Um, the, the platforms. <laughs> um, I rescued about two of the people because the, the premise is is you you've got you know you've lost all your crew members for your spaceship and you have to go and collect them and find them. Um, there's a little bit of a story in it. It's a lo it's actually quite a lot more elaborate than any Commodore 64 game ever was, but it's got that style and the same kind of sound effects. It's got a lot of positive reviews. Oh, it's it's a very well renowned indie game. Um, it was one of the you know the kind of I'd say like the second or third generation of you know good indie games that came out uh, like with super meat boy and braid and that kind of thing you know when it started getting big uh, yeah. i i'd never heard of it until i saw it on humble bundle but i was quite i'm quite yeah quite quite like That's it first time i've ever heard of it like. yeah um uh, I'd, I'd recommend it if you like hard platformers if it's you actually, like actually uh six v's as well is it six sorry 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 <laughs> developer person it's vvv vvv v, v, v. ah now I'm glad you're here, actually, Steve, today, because the Fro Frozen Synapse, which is another 
uh, another one that you uh, sorry another one that I've played this week again yeah. it's another one I've had for ages you will love that game knowing that you like hard strategies it, you know um, XCOM uh, yeah. you know you, you have a turn based kind of stuff and then the, the enemies move What ha- it's a similar kind of thing but everyone moves at the same time so what you do is you have a planning stage you yeah. you basically give all of your all of you guys waypoints, and you say right this is uh, this is where he starts. When he gets to this waypoint, he needs to aim that way, and he needs to get ready to shoot, or he needs to focus on this enemy, or he needs to wait for three seconds, or, or something like that, um, or he needs to duck or stand or run, or, you know, to give him a yeah, command. Yeah, yeah. You've got like a timeline, so each turn is five seconds. So you say so you've got three guys. Um, it's a randomly generated map, and it's kind of top-down isometric. Uh, it's top-down uh, perspective, but it it it's you know it looks like it should be two. It's two. It could be two D, but they've they've yeah, done yeah. it. They've, they've done three D to make it look nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it it's extremely difficult because every if you fail the level. You can't learn from your mistakes, really. You have to know the game engine. You don't have to know how the mechanics work because the levels are always different. And they're, they're different enough for you to to go, right, I, I I need to employ a different tactic this time around, you know? Yeah. Um, so th- there's different en- enemy types. There's snipers. There's guys with shotguns, guys with... Um, rocket launchers, by rocket, the looks of it. Yeah. And the, the tutorial is pretty good. I mean, I actually played it a good while ago. ago. Play the tutorial, realised how bloody difficult it was going to be, and thought, <sighs> step away from that for a bit. I'm not in the right frame of mind for it. And then yeah. I'm quite glad I went back to it because I'm thoroughly enjoying it now, and I'm up to about maybe level level three or something. But I would recommend it to you. And they're also the the company that did uh, that did it uh, again, another indie company. Really nice lads. The guy, the guys on there. I've been talking to them on Twitter a fair amount. Just general game dev stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah they're, they're really nice. But the, to bring in another game out, which started out as um, Frozen End Game, but I think it's now called Frozen. Oh God damn it! It's they've changed the name of it anyway. But Frozen End Zone was because they were making like an American football tactical game, but it was futuristic, like death ball type thing, you know? Uh, yeah, kill each other ball. and stuff. Yeah, and I didn't, I hadn't really looked too much up up on it, but I, th- I don't know how much it's changed or. Uh, but they changed the name and probably a bit of direction. But yeah, I. Th- I I think you'd like it, and if you don't get well, it by a land party, I'll show you. I've uh, I've added it to my wish list anyway. Yeah, if you don't if you don't have it by a land party, by the next land party, I'll show you it, and I bet you'll like it because I can just see you getting really good at it. I can just see you like really embracing the the style of gameplay. Sweet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was actually quite interested to, uh, to hear what Sam had to say about the Grim, uh, new Grim Fandango. Yeah, I've heard a few people. Um, who have give it positives? Uh, I've had uh, the, again the podcast I was on that the, one of the guys had played it, but he he he's a bit of an achievement whore, and he's playing it with the tank controls to get an achievement, not with the new control system. So <laughs> it's like uh, I, I started off down that whole achievement whore path, oh, and no, uh, no. I kind of just came to realization one day I'm not enjoying this. Yeah, I'm just not enjoying playing the games anymore. So I've kind of kicked all that out of the curb and just playing it for fun again now. Yeah, I I I'd never really bothered about. It. I mean, when I was on the 360, I was a gamer point kind of. I wanted to get high game, but high gamer points on my mates. But I didn't. I got. I, I'm all right, you know. I'm down twenty thousand gamer points or something ridiculous. It's only because of the amount of games that I've got. It's not yeah, because of because you were particularly good at any one. Of them. Yeah, I've, I've, some of them I've hammered. You know, like the Oblivions and that. I've nearly hundred percent of the achievements. But yeah, some of the other games I just I got one or two and left it. There's only um, one game on the 360 I managed to get the full one thousand gamer points for. Yeah, that was uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong. And really? that was only because as long as you complete the game, you get a thousand gamer points. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you get like a hundred for every level, and there's ten levels. All right, I um, I got, I got that for the PS2, I think it was, mm. um, Peter Jackson's Hong Kong or whatever it was, and I never played it, but Sam played it. He played my copy of it and completed it, and he was like, "It's all right, you know, we should have a go." And I was like, "It's not a bad game. Um, it's not the best game by any measure, but uh, still doesn't beat Rampage." Bad. Back back in the day, if you remember that, is it Rampage, yeah. the one where you you different? Yeah, you could climb up the buildings and. We we were playing that on the Atari ST, me and Sal, a few weeks back, and uh, 
well, months back actually. And then we, she, she I, I figured out the controls pretty quick. I've never played it before, but um, figured out the controls fairly quickly. But she yeah. managed to wait until right to the end of the game. I'd nearly beat her. And then she figured the controls out, and then she could hit the buildings quicker. For uh, she figured something out, a better way of doing it, or something, and beat me. Well, different but, characters uh, could hit at different speeds and climb faster and stuff and jump higher. Yeah. So maybe she was just a better character. Uh, maybe I don't know. I think she's probably just better at Atari games than I am. She's she's she had an Atari as a kid. Um, uh, hello, hello to Tristan Hill, by the way, in the chat. Thanks for saying hello to us, and hello, Biar. Hello. Uh, if he's still there, he keeps coming in and out. But uh, there's a few other people that have been in, and I don't know what Twitch is doing at the moment. I don't know if people are watching us or not. I've got to be honest with you. But hello, if you're there. Um, yeah, so I, I haven't played any other games, uh, but I, I had a, I did have a bit of a sesh this weekend, and I've I've played those four. Oh, well, I've um, I'm still I'm still trying to put aside enough time so I can give uh, Endless Legends. A good go because I think in order to get into that, I'm gonna have to put a good four or five hours into it minimum. Yeah, just to kind of get used to all the controls and the way that the strategy works and the level and systems and what have you. It does sound like it's um, it's pretty uh, pretty involved anyway, at mm -hmm. least. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the next section. We haven't. I mean, this week's been a bit of a, a bit of a mess. We haven't done that much. We norm, I normally do a bit of research, but I've just started a new job, so I've been busy with it. And everyone else has disappeared off the, the face of the earth and can't be asked for doing anything. So because I haven't done anything, nothing's been done. Um, oh. Yeah. So I was just going to have a have a quick look at the upcoming releases um, that yeah. are, are coming out. Just skipping through them now. Uh, I. I noticed there's the new Game of Thrones, uh, you know, the Telltale yeah, Games. the Telltale Games one. I, I never played the first episode. No, I did get good reviews. I haven't played any of them, um, and I don't think I will. I'm, I've actually played the first season of Walking Dead. I've got the second season already, and I've also got the 400 Days uh, thing. I quite enjoyed the first season, but by the end of it, I just felt a little bit like it wasn't as... There wasn't as much choice as there, there were kind of support yeah, you know like, uh, advertise of the way yeah it did, i mean even though i mean i'm sure i could have killed some characters and saved some others in a different way if i played it differently i don't think there's that much choice you know i don't think it's that elaborate anyway um but yeah i'm i'm, I'm not haven't um i haven't watched game of thrones yet anyway for my sins so i should probably watch uh, that yeah, first probably and i i only watched the um the first season of Walking Dead as well, so that's why I didn't play any of them Telltale uh, attempts, Telltale games. You you don't need to. It's an <coughs> entirely different thing. It's in fact, it's got absolutely nothing to do with. I think there's maybe one or two characters from the main game in that, but yeah, there is actually Herschel's in it. He's the he's one of the main guys in in the Walking Dead series and in the books. But the book the books, sorry, the comics and the game and and everything just they, they're all different. They're all kind of different timelines and skewed. So yeah, they're not uh, not the same thing. Evolves out on the tenth of Feb. Yeah, Lou's quite excited about that. I haven't really seen much about that. It's a it's a four player shoot 'em up. You know, it's it's four player first person shooter basically, with yeah. with a bit of like um, arena based a, fighting. Four v one, wasn't it? Oh was yes. Else? Yes. Sorry, he did say that, it's didn't a he? Four v one where you've got four people versus one kind of massive monster. Yeah. And the monster evolves. Hence the great name. Oh, is that uh, how I'm it more works? interested mm. uh, in the game that's coming out on the 14th of February, which, uh, as everyone knows, is Valentine's Day, <laughs> called Seduce Me, <laughs> which, from what I can tell by looking at the screenshots, is one of these, uh, you know, these kind of Japanese image text adventure things, Yeah. Uh, where you just try and get women to suck your penis. Yeah, I still, if I'm going to play any kind of dating simulator, which I'm not, by the way, let's just clarify that. I would play a hateful boyfriend just because uh, the fact that you're chatting pigeons up. I just like yeah. the, I just like the fact that it's not. Someone's. I think the reason that some whoever made it made it. That I read somewhere anyway was that they made it because they wanted to prove that you could make a dating simulator without nudity or without girls or something like that, without yeah. people in it or something. And so they decided to, yeah, decided to create a. Pigeon simul pigeon dating simulator. Uh, Major uh, Majora's Masks out on oh, the thirteenth on the three DS uh, on the thirteenth of Feb. Ooh, I might get that. I haven't played that one, you know. 
I've played never played Majora's Mask. No, I've, not, I've never even played it. I, I have played it, sorry. I borrowed it from a friend, but I borrowed it and then didn't have time to play it. So I played like the first little bit and then buggered off, uh, then gave it back to them, sorry. It's a Zelda game, it's going to be good. Yeah, I mean, I know you, there was different masks that you could have and they did different things or people responded to you differently. American Truck Simulator. Now you might laugh at that. I know you're going to laugh at that, but it's very popular. And uh, well, I know. Uh, and, and all of the simulator games are farming simulator. Uh, there's one called um, called Spin Tires, uh, which is basically uh, a big, massive Russian vehicle simulator, like these big sixteen wheel like monsters that carry the ICBMs. Yeah, and you can configure your vehicle down to the point where you can change how much tire pressure you've hmm. got in them, which changes the way you go over mud in a skull of different terrains have you they are massively popular uh it's not something that it's ever really taken my fancy the, the, i mean the euro truck simulator which is the one that's out now obviously i saw, I saw so again saw someone play that on twitch uh, a while back but i watched it for a little bit and i was like that actually looks pretty cool for you know for what it is it's it it's set it is what it says on the tin it looks okay he had a big steering wheel and the paddles and the joy you know and all that stuff and yeah. uh he seemed to be enjoying himself and he, he he spent ages like parking the truck but the same the same guy said that they've released an update recently and he lost his save and he, he basically built up a company in this game and uh yeah. he, he had one truck for his company and that that someone something had happened to the, this latest update, and the truck he now he then couldn't he couldn't use anymore, so he'd have to start from scratch. So I thought it was a bit annoying. Whoever's you know, whoever's <coughs> released that. Shit. Um, what are those? Oh, they've um, they've 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 remade or they're remaking Oddworld. Yeah, um, isn't that isn't that already out? Uh, no, it comes out at the end of this month, I think. Uh, Odd, so Oddworld new and tasty there, the twenty fifth. Um, yeah, but apparently Odd it's it's complete. The grassroots from the ground have rebuilt everything. New music, right? Uh, all three D models. They've, I don't know. Oddworld that... Strangers Wrath came out. That was the one I'm thinking of. Twenty uh, seventh of January, and that's on the Ouya. Oh, that's that uh, Android thing, isn't it? I'm not sure. I, I've heard a lot of talk about the Ouya, but I haven't actually paid any attention to it. Uh, is it on the, think, just on the Uya? Yeah, oh. I think that's just a direct part from the Xbox version. Oh, yes it is. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, well, where's no, the... Uh, one, is it? The one coming out on the 25th is a complete remake. Yeah. I quite enjoyed Oddworld when I had it for the PlayStation. I never played it. It wasn't there. I wasn't into it. I wasn't. It didn't look like the kind of game I'd be into. It was just a, a, a puzzle platformer with a bit of a dark kind of side to it. Yeah. Well, I must admit, there's not much else that I'm looking at that's uh, appealing to me. Uh, there's uh, not a massive amount. I mean, I think the big thing that we're all waiting for is uh, Grand Theft. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll wait for that. I think they'll, it's been delayed, hasn't it, again, for PC. I, I think I'm going to wait for wait for that and play it with you guys. Someone's just <coughs> asked in chat, um, Anakin Black Deer, like, uh, like the name. If that's your real name, then well done to your mother. <laughs> Anakin Blackdeer has just said, uh, "What is your favourite simulator?" Uh, surgeon simulator. <laughs> I've I've enjoyed some simulators, but the reason that I don't play them that much is because they are just time sinks. It's like the same argument I have with MMOs. It's that I don't have the time now. I'm a grown up, you know. Now I have responsibilities and I've got hobbies and other, you know, friends and a wife and cats and animals, you know, and everything else. You don't, I don't really want to sink that much time into things that don't really give me that much. You know, there's not really a, an end or a, prog or a, a quantifiable progression, I think. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there's, uh, Greg's uh, got us at the, um, I forget what flight simulator that he's been playing recently, but he sinks. Like, C-130, I think it's called. C-130, yeah. He's sunk a ridiculous amount of time into that and also spent a lot of money getting the gear as well, which it's all very impressive and it's fantastic when you play. It's really reactive with the track IR and using this Hotas joystick setup and whatever. It's a beautiful setup, but I don't think it... it it, it's just not something that really appeals me that much that would want to bring me back to it. Mm. So it's like it's it's fun to play on your friends, but would I go out and spend the best part of a grand on equipment to yeah. play it? Not in this world. 
I mean, I, I, I probably would. I, I'll be honest with you. If I, were, you know, if I was inclined to, if I thought I was going to put some time into it, but I've got to be honest with you. I'd rather get that kind of nice joystick set up um, mm. for for a game like Battlefield or something like that. Something that's, you know, I can just jump in and out of. Or I mean, yeah. I suppose you can do that with Truck Simulator, but I don't know. <coughs> I'm trying to think what, what simulator games I actually have played and enjoyed. Uh, let's uh, let's flip it around. Uh, what's Sonic and Black Day's favourite simulator? Yeah, you, you tell us what what you like to uh, what you like to play, and tell us what we should play. In fact, yeah, are there any recommendations? Yeah, some are preferably where you don't have to buy hundreds of pounds worth of peripherals. Would be good. Hmm. I mean, I've played. I have played um, Surgeon Simulator, uh, as as we said last week, and laughed my face off whilst playing it. I mean, ridiculous. I I just went off on a giggling fit. I think more, you know, more than anything. But yeah, there's a few other think- simulators I've played over the years. I played a few um, early Microsoft Flight Sims. Yeah, I think everyone's had a go of Flight Sims, and again, they were fun for the time. But I don't know. It's like. I, th- I think you've got to be of a certain mindset to enjoy a flight simulator. It's it's quite OCD um, rewarding, I think. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, well, like, flick uh, this switch, wait to get this altitude, press that button, do this, and it's everything by the book, doing everything in a sequence. And I think it's also for enthusiasts, isn't it? At the end of the day, oh, you've of got course, yeah. you've got to kind of be enthusiastic about wanting to fly or wanting to be able to fly or land land a plane or something, you know. It's uh, and it goes back to the uh, the discussion we had months ago about why we play games, and it's for me it it is a bit of an escape, and like a truck simulator. It's like well, any simulator well, apart from surgery, uh, or fly <laughs> flying. <laughs> but um, I mean, you can even it, it's it's not that difficult to get flying lessons. I, I've 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 got a friend who's done it, and you you get up in the air relatively quickly. Obviously, you're mm. not controlling the plane yourself, but you. Holding the stick and learning bits, maybe. But uh, a truck simulator, I drive enough as it is. That's yeah. why I think I don't really uh, take to driving games that much. I'm, I've never been a driving game fan personally. I mean, I, you know, again, I just feel like not that I'm doing something I do in real life or anything like that. I, I, I just don't feel like it's that rewarding to me. I enjoy the last driving game that I enjoyed was Gran Turismo 2 on the PS2. Was it PS2 that? It might have been the original PlayStation. Uh, GTA, uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 was the first one released on the PS2. No, it was, oh god, I don't know. Because uh, the, the PS2 was launched with Grand uh, Grand Theft Auto 3. You sure? Launch pack, yeah. You sure? Was well, sure it wasn't two? No, because I've actually got the PlayStation 2 uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 racing pack. I'm going to have a look because I Jokes. I could have swore it was the PS2. Oh no, PlayStation! Right, you are. Sorry, so hard. You doubt me? I did. I did. I, I well, I enjoyed that, and I also enjoyed like daft um, games. I, in fact, you know, one of the games that I miss immensely, uh, one of the racing games that I miss immensely, and I miss it. Miss playing with you guys as well. Roll Cage. Do you remember Roll Cage? And do you remember playing it at LAN parties? It was it was like a wipeout, but with cars. You know, it wasn't. Oh yes, floating. yes, 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 yes. And you, you yeah, could go upside down and get power ups. It was yeah, like you, a, could, you just fell over, didn't you? And you kept on going, and this, which oh, doesn't really and, work because your wheels would be going the wrong direction. But yeah, yeah. and you'd also you'd also um, f- like fly into the scenery as well because there was lots of bugs and that. But uh, yeah, I remember I remember enjoying playing roll cage. I also um, played flat out quite a lot with you guys. Um, flat out two specifically and driver. I remember playing uh, at driver. Land Park. Lamp party. Like driver. But uh, Driver had a bit more to it. It wasn't a, just a racing game or a simulator, was it? No, no, it, it's, it, it had other elements to it where yeah, uh, there was more of a story to it as well. Uh, <laughs> that what, question's uh, caught yeah, me off I've, guard a second. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, just, I just read a question in chat. Don't mind me asking, but what is your guy's favourite colour? I'm not trying to be some sort of way. I, I don't understand at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> what what do you what's, have a favourite colour? I, I do have a favourite colour, but I'm not sure if that's the full uh, uh, the full the full question. Uh, my my favourite colour happens to be red, and it's nothing to do with the red stuff behind. Well, <laughs> the maroon stuff behind me. Maybe it does actually. I did paint this room, so I don't know. Um, yeah, my favourite colour is red, but <laughs> my favourite colour tends to change on my mood. But at the minute I'm quite liking green. Yeah, I. 
I, I think it's it's again it's a bit of an abstract thing, isn't it? A favorite color. It's like what unless unless you're one of those absolute mentals that d- covers everything in your favorite in, color. Color. <laughs> you must. I think it went around the internet for a while. Do you see that house that was just purple and silver? Purple. It like, looked normal from the outside. <laughs> oh, every, I think everyone's seen that anyway. Hello, um, hello, Jedi. Welcome to the chat. Hello. Yes, there are less of us. Um, as you can see, just me and Steve. Uh, I, I have I have already said a few times, but yeah, we've um, unfortunately Sam had uh, technical issues, and Lou has decided to to not show up. So that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Um, so we decided to just go go for it anyway. And unfortunately, we couldn't get a guest because it was short notice, etc., uh, etc. Et but yeah, there's, there's not much else that I've heard about that's coming out. That's uh... no, it's um, it's well, it's my own fault really. I haven't really been paying that much attention. I'm trying to get things sorted, but uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's got a PC sat in it. Yes, yes. No, I, uh, I'm, I'm gonna again. I'm gonna try at weekends to get a, at least a few hours of in of a new game every week. Um, I, I am very conscious though at the moment that I'm. I'm starting games and I'm not actually finishing them again. Like I again, I used to you do that quite a lot, but I, I played um, South Park Stick of Truth quite a lot, and then I just stopped playing it. Ah, oh, that's awesome, that game. It is awesome, but I'm not sure if I was enjoying it enough to keep going anyway. You know, I did I did really like it at the time, but there's, it doesn't again doesn't seem to be that rewarding. It doesn't seem to have too much feedback. It's a fan service. It's brilliant as as a South Park fan, but yeah. It's substance, you know. I mean, it is all just fart and dick jokes, isn't it? Really, it is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can only take so much of it. It's a place and time. <coughs> yeah, exactly. Time and place. Even. Um, is going on the chat here. Did you hear about the new intellectual property that Blizzard is making? Somewhat uh, similar to Team Fortress. I've heard of something to do with Blizzard recently. What? Oh no no no! Sorry, I found I, I'm a, I'm an absolute idiot, and this is old news. But I found out that Hearthstone was Blizzard. I didn't realise because <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm an idiot. Um, you're a noob. But no, unfortunately, we have not uh, heard about the new IP that Blizzard is making. Please, please inform us. Overwatch. Um, hmm. Overwatch it looks like a, a very arcadey team deathmatch type of thing. Let's have a quick look. Very colourful. Battle.net account. Oh, I have seen this actually, yeah. In fact, yes, I have seen this. I saw someone playing a beta, in fact, and it looked really nice. It's got the same kind of stylings, a kind of a cross between um, an MMO called Wildstar, which is a very cool looking MMO. It's like a um, it's like a WoW kind of clone that's more action based and more you know straight up. You, you shoot people rather than target someone and just click fire like WoW was. Um, and hello, um, X Marty Marty McFly again. I saw you pop in earlier, but um, nice to have you back. I think I don't know if you've been watching the entire time, but there's uh, Twitch keeps telling us that you, everyone's left and then everyone comes back. So gets very lonely every now and again. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, said so chat's quite busy this week. I've, I did actually tag us um, tag us as a game talk show, which is a new thing I saw on Twitch. No, I, we've been under the game development tag for a while, so get, again, game talk shows uh, now there. I don't know how long it's been there, but I'll be doing that from now on. Um, so, uh, we've got do we, what Go do on. we think of what the hell? Oh, sorry. Uh, what do we think of the Nintendo affiliate program for YouTube? Now, I haven't. I, have, I don't know the details surrounding this because again I've been busy this week I've, I've unfortunately I said started a new job and I haven't had time to really keep up to date like I normally do um, but if I'm if I remember right that this new Nintendo thing is just basically them saying we'll you know we, you you can you well initially initially they came out and said you can stream our games as much as you want I think because there's been a few uh, quite a few publishers that have been coming out and going no you actually should owe us money for streaming our games it's our content yeah. that you're streaming but arguably you know there's always the argument that the people who are doing the streaming the people who are actually producing the game you know uh, pro- sorry well i suppose you could call it producing to an extent producing the content you know putting it out there streaming it people come to watch them you know i imagine yeah. that our, our subscribers don't come and watch the clips that we 
we put up, they come and watch us. And the same goes for every other Twitch viewer, you know, if a, a Twitch player rather. Uh, there's a guy um, I was watching again the other, the other week who's got th hundreds of thousands of followers, and he, he's he, he, people go to watch him. You can tell by the chat they talk to him like he's a friend, you know, they talk because he, he engages with them and he talks to them a lot. And that's what they come for. They don't come to come in. In fact, the guy was switching between games while he was streaming because he was yeah. having he's having like a year anniversary. Um, I think he's called uh, Geek Domo. I don't. Uh, you've probably, you, if any of you guys are uh, a regular Twitchers, you've probably heard of Geek Domo. But yeah, he's a, he's a again nice lad, and he's, you know, he's playing about maybe about six different games while I was watching him. Um, but hello to everyone else joining the room. Wow, God, well, it's, it's crazy. Quite, uh, I said to those who just the those who have just joined, uh, we, we've got a, we normally have more people than this. We usually have four people on the on the team or a guest as well. But we just had a bit of issues this week, so it's not really come together. But thank you, thank you for watching. Very very much appreciated. Same time every week. Yeah, same time every week. Seven thirty is on Wednesdays. Uh, Seven thirty GMT on Wednesdays. So yeah, get subscribed and we'll uh, you know we'll we'll be on next week again. Um, uh, the interesting thing about the uh, the Nintendo the affiliate program though is it actually well, from what I've heard initially is a percentage of the proceedings they get from the advertising uh, they give back to the user. Uh, well, uh, affiliate suggests that, and I was going to say I thought that must be what it's about, but I hadn't heard about this, so I'm just having a quick read. Um, so what what's happening yep. then? They they upload things to YouTube. Nintendo are saying right, we're actually going to put a, a a content match on it we're going to yeah. take the revenue but we're going to give it back some of it back to you guys is yeah. that how so it's going to if, work if, if you upload a video with nintendo content that's obviously advertising their product hmm. they will get the money from it but they will then give you a percentage of it back for doing their work for them essentially or they from could just understand. you know what actually i mean i i, I may be i may be doing a bit of a, a a reaction without knowing too much about it then in that case but that's still arguably still a problem to me you know it's Why? like because the you the people who are putting things up on youtube are the the right bearing in mind that when you put something up on youtube people have to either click an ad or view an ad all the way through in order for you to get any kind of revenue for it yeah mm -hmm. so when if they if they've got an ad blocker you don't get any revenue from people watching whatsoever yeah. so you, you've already you know you've already lost out lost there essentially yeah. i mean everyone these days everyone who's savvy anyway has an ad blocker it's just basically the way it goes unfortunately um but the people who are doing the content as i said that content would not be out there your game wouldn't be getting streamed and getting probably more sales from it and getting more you know you would be you, you'll be getting more interest in the game from these big the big streamers anyway the people who are um you know who've got thousands or millions of subscribers those guys you know they make a living off it they ha they have to make money somehow but Nintendo saying they're going to take it and we're going to we're going to basically control how much you get. I still think that's I still don't think that's right. Yeah, but well, it's a step in the right direction from the alternative of just saying, you know, content match, take it down. Yeah. At least it allows people to upload the videos and start maybe making a name for themselves and it's a step in the right direction, I think. I suppose, and maybe maybe it'll level the playing field as well for small players like us, for yeah. example. You know, we're, we're, you know, essentially when you look at it, we're competing with things like um, I say competing because we're doing this, you know, uh, as a hobby. We're not doing it seriously or anything like that. But you know, we're competing with um, uh, the co-optional podcast and that kind of, and they have millions of views. You know, they've got oh, that, yeah. they've got thirty thousand people watching live, and then they have two hundred, five hundred thousand people watching on YouTube afterwards. So you know, it's a very different world. But maybe that kind of would level it out for the people who do play games as well. I don't know. Maybe. Um, hello to other people who just said hello. Hello, Tom, Tom, Thomasby, Thomasby. I wish I wish Tom people Ashby. would use just just Tom. That'd be fine, wouldn't it? Or or Jeff, you know, Franklin, something like that would be easy. Um, Tom's probably taken. Uh, so yes, what we're hi hi the, hello hello. <laughs> we again we don't really pay, you not normally have time to pay too much uh, attention to the chat because we're we're always talking between us and we've got plenty you know we have plenty of things to say but. So um, Marty's just said, if you get hundred, if you get a hundred dollars, Nintendo takes about twenty dollars, and YouTube takes fifty, and the network would take ten to twenty. YouTube takes fifty. Why does YouTube? T I mean, I suppose YouTube's hosting it. Uh, that's actually, I take that back. YouTube yeah. does need to. 
I say it does need to make money. They don't need to make money, do they? They don't need that much. That's no, pretty they ridiculous, though. Cover their costs, on. Pretty sure those names are taken. Yes, all right. Tom and Jeff probably are taken on, on Twitch. Sorry, matey. Um... But yes, thank you to everybody else. If you are interested, subscribe, and we, we'll next week we have a you know we'll have a much uh, better show. The the quality will be better as well because we said so we kind of. Unfortunately, you probably see my uh, my screen come up and down a little bit as my mouse moves over uh, Skype at the moment because <laughs> there's only two of us on the call, so I've had to precariously um, position it. I don't know whether it's status on the stream as well, but your video quality just went absolutely diabolical. Um, it, well, it won't be because I'm catching it, but yeah, it is a bit blurry on the stream, but it is what it is, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, right, yes, yeah, so let's, I suppose, maybe move on to the next bit. We've, we've talked as much as we can about the news. Yep. I, I haven't actually seen that much um, about releases this week. I haven't seen that much about new things that are coming. In the last couple of weeks, we've actually seen a fair amount of... Um, We've, we've talked about a fair amount of other things coming up in the next few months anyway, so... Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Um, Sam, one of our other hosts, he's actually played Grim Fandango as well this week, the remastered version, so hopefully next week we'll have an opinion on that. Because we, we all want to... Well, I want to play it anyway, at least. I want to play it. Yes, yeah, I think we all want to have a go. Um, I didn't play the original. I, I got it a while back. Um, I downloaded it, played it a little bit, hated the controls, loved the script from what I saw of it, but I couldn't figure out how everything worked. You know, I couldn't. It was it wasn't very helpful. You know, um, but I'm looking forward to playing it with the new controls and the new textures, and hopefully there'll be a maybe a few more prompts or maybe a bit more. You know, at least you might be able to rebind your controls or something. I don't know. I would have thought so. Yeah. Um, <coughs> right. So the way of the exploding list. We're going to have some cool title for that at some point when we get off, pull our finger out and get on it. So yeah, what we do now is we have a, a very quick random list that we'll throw out there. Um, I've had something written down since last week when I had a bit of a brainstorm. Uh, I'm just going to remind myself of what it was. Um, unless you have something, Steve. Yeah, I've just done it. I've just done the Skype thing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got an idea, but if you've had one on the... Uh... I've, on your I've, mind for a couple of weeks, you may as well get that off, off your I've chest. I've actually got three. I've got three. That's just showing off. Um, I kind of want to save all these for everybody. I have to be honest with you because I think they're all they're all pretty pretty good ones that we could have a good old chat about. But bugger it, I'll just pick the first one. Um, what is your favourite local multiplayer games? <laughs> <coughs> local multiplayer. So local multiplayer for again for those of you who are about sixteen or under who have probably only ever played online uh, is is when you're both sat in the same room together. And uh, should should we include land parties there? Because that that opens it up big time, doesn't yeah, it? That that's not necessarily a local game. That's stuff that's on the same screen. Yeah. Or or split screen. You know that that's yeah. got that capability. So of all time. Of all time. Um, right, well, three, ah, three have just popped actually. into my head. Right, first one, um, I, IK yeah, Plus. IK Plus, yeah. I love that okay. game. Love IK Plus. International Karate Plus. It was awesome. Um, and there was also, uh, there's a, uh, was it that one? No, it was Yi Kung Fu, actually, um, that I played. I never played that. Quite a lot. And it was a similar kind of thing, and it was just, I think it was styled after Bruce Lee type stuff. But, um, I, yeah, Yiya Kung Fu. There was actually, I think I might have might have relayed this story before, but I'm going to do it now anyway. We were playing it, me and my me and my best friend at the time on the Commodore 64. And we were loading it up on tape, and uh, as you load it up, in the middle of it, you know, you, you know, on the, the old 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 computers, you used to get a screen that would pop up while it was loading. Sometimes it'd be like the logo, or it'd be like a yeah, yeah, splash you know, screen type of thing. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of art, game art. Yeah. Um, and it was always awesome as well in comparison to the actual game. It always looked brilliant. Anyway, this the screen pops up, and when it did that, it also screamed "Ye Are Kung Fu" as you did it. Now, we had the TV turned right up because we were trying to listen to the the beep, you know, the uh, the modem sounds. The dee -dee -doo -doo -dee 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 that. We were trying to listen to them. They were really quiet. I can't remember why we were trying to listen to them. Weird, but yeah. And anyway, we turned it right up, and we forgot about it. His mum walked in the room with a tray of tea as this went off, and the TV was whacked up, and it just went, Yeah, Kung Fu! 
<laughs> dropped all his tea everywhere. And we, I don't think we ever lived it down. I think she was she <laughs> hit. She's like bloody, bloody computer games. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, she was a Christian woman, so she didn't she didn't you know hit us or <laughs> beat us up or anything. Um, um, I'm gonna go in then with uh, Syndicate was. Is is that multiplayer same screen? Yeah. Was it split screen or was it all on the same screen? All the same screen. Oh, I, I, I think obviously it never did split when you walked a certain distance away from each other. It would split then, but for the majority of it, you were all on the same screen. Right. So, oh, so as you as you moved away, it would split like twenty four yeah. style. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I, I said I don't think I ever. I don't think I had friends actually when I played that. <laughs> oh, me and Lou sunk days into that game. Yeah, you talk about it fondly quite a lot. Um, yeah. All right, next one, uh, local multiplayer. You can't have, you can't talk about local multiplayer without talking about Goldeneye. I don't think. I know you. Pro I don't think you. Did you play it? I did play it, uh, but I wasn't a massive advocate of it. Uh, probably because I only played it on a friend's console. And, and also, you were probably into Quake and you know other games by then, and you'd, you'd played yeah. things that were equally as good with less restrictions on the PC. Well, that's it. Uh, Quake was. Uh, it was so much more accessible for me uh, using a keyboard and mouse mm. than using the uh, the wherever joypad it was called was it the uh, Trident joypad or the uh, the Nintendo sixty four one the, th the three prongs <laughs> yeah the the odd sex toy thing yeah that, I, I I could get away with that with certain games but for first person shooters just didn't feel right no I don't I don't like I've said many times I don't like first person shooters on consoles at all with a control pad in fact I think I now I now accept that I don't even like um, third person games with a control pad I, I still prefer mouse and keyboard I think and I, I, I did used to be you know I did used to give consoles that I used to say yep yeah, actually third person games are better on console but I don't I don't believe that at all bit of a random one um, me and Lou again when we were kids on his mega drive we used to uh, spend hours playing uh, Dr. Robotnik's main beam machine you know, yeah, could I've play competitively against each other I've played that uh, a fair amount and I've seen again Lou play at LAN parties uh, quite a lot sorry about the screens guys I'm, uh, my screen's bobbing up and down again I'm trying to fix my camera but it looks like it's just going to be blurry oh. um, right Ugh, come on, what else? Come on, there's got to be you other. Have to mention Mario Kart. Yes, all right, I'll give you that one. I I'm going to say the SNES version as well because that was always my yeah. favourite so far. Anyway, um, I imagine that you can play the most recent Mario Karts online and with other people and that. Yeah, you can. We can also play local as well. Yeah. Um... So I'm just reading it's some all... some of the chat. Go on. Uh, I was going to say it's. Um... It all seems to be very much console based, the uh, like the local multiplayer, which is obviously what the console market was originally aimed at before things went online. Well I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put this up there in the list, but there is a, a good local multiplayer game that I've played recently on PC and that was um Oh my god, it's lost my brain. It's it's a, a brawler game. Oh there you go, Super Smash Brothers. That was that's ah. that's a good local multiplayer game. Any of the fighting games, in fact, you know. Yeah, well, we'll forget about them. Tekken yeah. Street Fighter. <laughs> Tekken Three was amazing. I had, I had so much fun with that. And Mortal Kombat One and Two. Obviously, it's got a bit ridiculous now, but I think what we're on, we're on ten, aren't we? Yeah, Mortal Kombat X. Yeah. Yeah, Smash Brothers. Super Smash Brothers Brawl was the last one I played on the Wii. Uh, on the Wii, and I, I again thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, I played it a lot with Sam, who's another host on the show. Um, yeah, Battle so... Toshin Den. Hey? Battle Arena Toshin Den. Haven't played that. That was another fighting game, but that was uh, PlayStation exclusive, I think. Right. Soul Calibur. That was always Soul good. Calibur was fun. I played that on the Dreamcast first. Soul Calibur 2 I played, actually, first. I think the Dreamcast version was the best version, to be honest. Yeah. In my opinion. It looked the best as well, which is weakened since it was the oldest console. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, to be fair, I'm starting now. All these games are starting to flood into my head now. Double Dragon on the Commodore 64, but I didn't actually Golden like Axe. that. Golden Axe was a, was a good game. Like, Double Dragon can, awesome. can 
screw off. <laughs> I've n- Fuck right off. <laughs> never liked it. I hated the controls. It really annoyed me because you had to be pixel perfect. You had to be exactly on the same line as an enemy. Like, yeah. t- to the... It just moving it out of it. Yeah, otherwise they, they could hit you, of course, but you couldn't hit them. Yeah. Oh, um, UFC. Um, UFC fighting game. That is a good local multi... Oh my god, I just got another one. Worms. <laughs> worms. <laughs> Any of the Worms <laughs> games. Worms, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were pretty awesome. When they first came out, as I remember spending hours and hours and hours playing the original Worms for the PlayStation. Go on, come on, guys, tell, give us some more then. Yes, some people are saying Marvel vs. Capcom. Capcom? Capcom? Um, Co- uh, Call of Duty vs. Battlefield? What? No, that's, Jedi that's not... Jedi has just said Golden Axe. Golden Axe, yep. Yep, got that one. Um, who else, has anyone else got anything? Someone said, upset. odd job was the worst, little bastard. You couldn't live, you couldn't line up the headshot at all since he was shorter. I used to either play as odd job or Jaws on uh, Goldeneye because <laughs> Jaws was much taller than everyone else and odd job yeah. wasn't. And everyone else was roughly the same height. So it, as you were just walking around, you could just hit people's heads immediately. But if you were odd job or Jaws, you had to do a bit more aiming. Yeah. Cheats. Streets of Ridge. Yes, that's a very good one. Very good. Oh, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. Cadillacs, oh, Cadillacs, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, yeah. Got all of them. I've seen that. Um, there's quite a few of the old arcade games as well. Uh, Metal Slug, mm. the two players, was, all, was always oh, just mayhem. The Simpsons game. And in fact, oh, um, yeah, Simpsons arcade game. And um, what was the, uh, um, the that, I've, I've said it a few times, Moonwalker. And that was, you could play oh. it as multiple Michael Jacksons. Oh, one was yellow, one was white. Yeah, you could, well, you could have up to four yeah. people, I think. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um, arcade game. Yes, again, all brilliant, all those. Uh, well, I've actually played um, that on Commodore 64 as well. That's uh, that. I don't think it was the same as the arcade game, but it had a similar kind of concept. It was, you know, a side-scroller type thing. Um, I think that's enough, anyway, for the list. We, yeah. we could go on for a that while. That was quite, but... quite a long list. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, fair enough, fair enough. Someone's asking us to talk about Battlefield yeah, versus think- COD, right? I'm not going to talk about Battlefield versus COD. I'm not going to talk about it because it's not worth talking about. And it, I'll probably insult people, I have to be honest with you. We are we are old school quick gamers, basically. That's where we come from. And anything that's a modern shooter, we generally hate. <laughs> I say we, <laughs> you everything. know. Not everything. I actually quite enjoyed Modern Warfare, uh, the original. Modern Warfare 2 was alright actually as well but I think it just got a bit silly after that and I, I didn't even bother with Ghosts I think I bought Black Ops and uh, I didn't get Black Ops 2 what was the one after that? Modern Modern Warfare 3 I think I've got as well but then I've stopped buying them What's um, the latest one now? Advanced Warfare? Or is, is that not out yet? Don't know I know um, Battlefield um, Battlefield 3 I played quite a lot of Battlefield 4, haven't even tried, and Hardline, I haven't tried either. Uh, again, I've just got a little bit bored of them, you know, these AAA companies churning out the same crap with a new, you know, a new skin on it every year. And it is yeah. generally the same crap. And, you know, you ca- your single player campaigns, which I quite like playing, are quite short. That there's, you know, six hours or something like that. And it, you need more than that in a game these days. You, you can't. You do. And the, the stories are never massively involved. There's. You, you don't really connect to the characters in it, and you, uh, like for a triple A company, you think they could do better. Yeah, yeah. The amount of resource we've got. Uh, we I, should. I Blackbeard has asked if we like Borderlands. Yes, we we are big Borderlands fans. I was just going to say, we, let's um, let's start to ignore chat a little bit, I think, and maybe move on to the uh, <laughs> the next thing. Everyone's asking us everything. It's going quite a bit. Of, quite, God, what happens if we we might have to get a bot if it keeps going up like this to keep everyone under under control. Well, if um, Sam can't connect, he can just stay in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, our next next uh, section of the show, it's actually the last section of the show. We're probably not going to go on for the full two hours today because, as I said, we normally have another two people. We normally have more content. Um, but we, next week, we should we should be back with, with everybody. Um, and... Oh, so Twitch is... Sorry, Skype's just done the thing again. I need to push it up, but I can't. Um, so... Th- yeah, so, the next section we've got under gaming news is uh, land parties dead with a question mark. Yeah, um, t- 
someone posted uh, there was a polygon article i'm going to put it in chat now for you uh, there's a polygon article this week that was basically saying our land party's dead what has you know what has happened to them and we have discussed it a few times we we're actually talking about local gaming a few episodes back and um we had a guy on who runs a land party and he said he, but well we used to we used to run well help administrate a land party anyway back in the, the northwest of england and um yeah he it's this this article basically goes on to say everything we said but then basically says yep land parties are dead and they always will be now the oh, big I don't agree with that I, I don't agree with that for a number of reasons I think I, I thoroughly enjoy sitting around with my friends and playing games I don't think I would enjoy going to a bigger LAN party though these days I've got the yeah. option to go to one soon actually that's um, uh, that's a uh, uh, one in fact the guy who was on last time uh, it's a, a LAN party called LAN Ops um, it's a good LAN party don't get me wrong but I only go and talk to my friends and our our gaming friend group has kind of dissipated recently so we've we haven't got as many people to go to these things so there'll be about three or four of us so we might as well just do it at a friend's house which is what we've done the last couple of times and it's worked quite well I think um, yeah, I mean, as someone just uh, mentioned the iSeries and DreamHack, and then there's Multiplay, and then I think Multiplay is the iSeries, isn't it? Or something like that. I can't remember. But I, I, yeah, so I mean, it's basically the bigger ones, I think they've become way too commercial and a little bit too serious, if I'm honest with you. They're, they're very concentrated on, you know, gaming competitions, and I'm going to have fun with my friends. I don't really want to go and be bad, you know bothered by the admins to play a, play a game whenever I, you yeah. know, if I don't want to. Maybe there's a, a, a market open enough for a more casual LAN party then. But, not the people people wouldn't go. That, I don't think there is a market there for it. I think maybe that's the point. I think <laughs> the, the more casual ones, I think, are for, you know, the casual ones are friends together. Mm. But when you go to a LAN party that is big, if you're talking about a market, then you mean that people are going to turn up to it obviously so it becomes big people then inherently start expecting uh, merchandise and expecting organizations i remember how much effort um, alan used to put into the land parties he used to put a hell of a lot of effort in. and and he stopped doing it because people just sat and complained at him for it i mean i'm sure there was other reasons but the, the, the people were never happy you know and then there's also the problem of security and having to get bouncers and having to, these days if the bigger your land party is the more electricity it's going to take the more the venue is going to cost the more you know everything else that comes with it i remember the uh the trouble we used to have trying to find a venue that would allow people to uh to either one stay in the room 24 hours or sleep at the computers and you can't and do that a, no yeah that, safety no no yeah that, uh, we we actually had it a few times where when we started to get the bigger venues and we had started having 150 200 people come in it was it got to a point where we, we couldn't we couldn't sleep at our computers anymore they wouldn't let us uh, it's ridiculous uh, but so this is why friends land parties are better plus you get to play i tend to play more games when there's less people because you want to all you can just play. splinter off and play little things or if you want to play i think four is the smallest number you could probably get away with i think because there's a lot of four or two v two or you know but if you had three there's oh, not many three player games you can no. play borderlands with three people and stuff like that i know but i mean last last land party what did we not last one maybe the one before that we um we played we went in fact we went to play borderlands didn't we the last land party but we yeah. spent a lot of it playing i introduced you guys to terraria and we all got totally addicted to it and played that i mean you yeah. especially we played it a lot um and I then i didn't sleep the first night playing that yeah i know you it's one of those <laughs> things that as soon as you get into it you're like oh awesome <coughs> um you know, but then and then another. Th I remember a few LAN parties ago when you came and you'd bought a lot of games that I hadn't heard of, and you you showed me them. And like that's when I played Surgeon Simulator and uh, Prison Architect. I think I I think I told you about that. I can't remember which way it was. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, that's cool. That's the thing that I like about LAN parties. I look at someone's screen and I go, "What's that then? What are you playing?" And then if they're miserable. You know, if they're not your mates they're usually like I'm yeah. playing a game fuck off leave me alone <laughs> and if they are your mates you're like oh yeah this is it and do you want to have a go and I'm like no no I'll get it myself I'm alright I don't want to go on your computer no, the are your mates are still like fuck off leave me alone I'm playing a game <laughs> yeah. but usually a bit more abusive aren't they yeah 
But yeah, that that was really the only news this week that I've seen that I've I've had a you know that stuck out. But then again, I said I'm not sat on Twitter and I'm not seeing all the contro controversy that usually occurs in the gaming industry or the news that that comes up. Um, I would. There's there's a part of me that likes to think that land parties will still be going on. Not even the big ones. Just that there is still people that get together with a bunch of mates for a weekend and just destroy the brains and fill a body full of crap yeah i mean i'm i'm doing the less less filling my body full of crap at lamp parties now i'm i'm tend to go to bed at a reasonable time and get yeah, up. i know you pussy uh, shut up i did actually <laughs> one of the nights last time i think i was up to a, for until a ridiculous time in the morning but again playing terraria i think maybe with you i can't remember uh, uh, the new uh the new civilization that came out um during the last land parties, I think I spent quite a few hours playing that as well. Was that yeah, Beyond Earth? All oh, right, no, I don't think it did. I think it was after that. In fact, it definitely was after that because you. No, it just came out that day on oh. that Friday. I, I I remember you telling us you were playing it outside of that. Is it anyway? Is it, pff, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the, um, is anybody? Does anybody else know of any news and uh, things that have gone on in the games industry? Because I literally have not got anything on my list, and I haven't been on any of the game sites uh, today. Because I've, I, uh, I don't, well, whenever I get home, I tend to come upstairs, do a bit of game dev, and then, you know, get on with the show stuff. So haven't really had time. But if you, if any of you have got anything that's. Uh, that's prevalent please let us know um in the meantime i believe there's another there's another story here i think sam posted this fan mod of the portal stories mel is closet we'll get to portal 3 what's this portal 3 valve don't make third games no they don't do they um i can't speed read that and uh Keep the keep the troops entertained, unfortunately. But yes, uh, if um, do make a portal three, I'll be quite interested to play it. Oh, I definitely. enjoyed the first two immensely. I think the first the first one I think was they were very lucky in that it got noticed. You mm. know when it was in yeah, the orange definitely. box. Was it the orange box? I think it was. It got released in the orange box. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and and people noticed it. I actually played it on the 360 first. Being a PC gamer, it's a bit weird. I did that, but yeah, I played it on the on the. Um, I don't think I've actually got it for the PC. I, I've got Portal 2, and I played Portal 2 on the PC. Obviously, they put a lot more effort and time into that, and they did yeah, a much bigger budget. Yeah, much bigger game as well, and they did a fantastic job of it. I mean, it is it to me? It is definitely a ten out of ten game. It's up there. It's up there with my favourite games ever. I think, um, and I still go back to it and play it, even though the puzzles. You know, I know most of the puzzles. I still enjoy the, the story, and I enjoy the way that it's presented, and you know, the humour built into the game. Cave Johnson's a legend. Cave C C K J K J K Rowling. That's the J K Harry Rowling. <laughs> J K Simmons. That's him. J K Simmons yeah. is the guy that Voice. does uh, does him. Yeah, Cave Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anyway, that I think nice. I think we we have probably exhausted ourselves today. So um, unless Steve has anything else that he would like to talk about, or like to I'm actually raise. feverishly looking through game news websites trying to find some. Yeah, to talk yeah. About. I said usually we, we, we're perfectly fine. We do a two-hour show, and we have said four people on, and we talk about everything that we've been playing this week and everything else that's uh, coming up. But I shall stop rambling, and I'll say thank you very much to those of you who have watched this week. Chat has been pretty amazing. I've got to be honest with you; it's been pretty. Uh, uh, pretty yeah. cool this week and, and I wasn't expect I was expecting a little bit more because I've now put us on this new tag on uh, Twitch but I wasn't expecting this many people so thank you very much and if you're interested in us uh, please subscribe to us on Twitch uh, as you already know where that is um, so uh, in fact I'm going to say it anyway because there's some people might watch us on YouTube so uh, twitch twitch.tv forward slash resonance arcade um, is our Twitch channel our YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash resonance arcade We've also got a Facebook, but we don't really put that much on it. So uh, no, actually, no. Lou, Lou does do stuff on that. Lou so um, spam it on if, me, doesn't he? if you're interested in the Facebook page, facebook facebook.com forward slash Resonance Arcade, and our Twitter is at Resonance Arcade. Again, we tend to just update about the shows and stuff. We haven't because we don't do this full time or anything like that. We we don't tend to put much more on that than that. Um, but yeah, subscribe to us, and uh, thank you very much for watching. Yeah, hopefully see you next week. Yeah, see you later.